from yeah. Merle from Dell, former Oak Arena. Now Dell. Merle, come on in. Come on in. Merle was the uh, CEO and I believe one co-founder. of the co-founders of, uh, of Oak Arena. The other guy was a smart guy. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're live inside the Cube. Welcome to the Cube. This is my co-host, John Furrier. <laughs> nice Hi, to meet John. you. Real-time uh, briefing. We haven't really had a chance to sit down and debrief, but uh, no we've been following. You wrote about the, the uh, acquisition, yep. uh, followed it, and so we're familiar with it. But uh, this is the Cube. Uh, we're broadcasting live here at the SNW. Cube. I feel honored. SiliconAngle.com, <laughs> where all the action is. SNW is where storage is changing from a you know industry that's about disk space and, and, and IOPS to one that's changing the world, enabling all kinds of great user experiences and uh, taking advantage of the latest and greatest technology. Uh, we're excited to have you, uh, Dave. Welcome back from your session. Yeah, thank you. It was good. We had uh, we had about 100 people in there talking about FCOE, believe it or not. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, and two of, them, two of them actually had FCOE. <laughs> so, so, but, so what's up with Dell? What's going on with Dell? So, so here's the thing. Let me set it up. So the number one trend in storage that we always talk about is, is storage growth. Right? It's out of control. And yep. It's been out of control since I started in the business, and it's going to be out of control when I leave the business. I have no doubt. Yep. And and that's kind of really where Ocarina was playing, was to mm -hmm. figure out ways to control that growth. Yep. Right? So why don't you talk a little bit about that, and, and maybe even go back a little bit to the sort of how you got the company going, and then where you're at now with the Dell integration. Sure. You know, uh, it's it's funny you talk about uh, that, that's it's a hot topic. It's, it, I feel like it's been a hot topic for the last three years. I, I would say that for the, uh, you know, about a third of every uh, paper that I saw presented at SNW in the last three years started with sort of one slide and, and, and it was just different ways of saying, you know, data, the data explosion is here. And, right. and it's sort of... Not, every year, it's not every, stopping. Right? That's right, it hasn't <laughs> let up yet and it, and it looks like it's going to continue. So, you know, you can't just wait for it to go away, so I guess you got to do something about it. And, um, you know, talking about sort of the, the origins of uh, Ocarina, uh, we, uh, actually, it was kind of funny, uh, my last company had sold uh, to Citrix, I'd been there for a couple of years, and one of the things I did when, uh, when we were well past integration, and I went up to the Citrix CIO, and I asked him for his top three problems. And, you know, I'm not a storage guy by, uh, by profession, and so uh, he, uh, his number two item was storage growth. It just something that was completely unexpected. You know, Citrix is not such a huge company, it doesn't store data for a living, so it didn't feel like that would be a big issue, but but here it was. And so, you know, I, uh, me and my co-founder, we, uh, we said, hey, you know, this sounds like a real life problem. We can go work on something cool, or we can work on something cool and important. So we said, well, how about that? Let's go pick that. So yeah. that, that was kind of how, uh, cool how we got Cool and important and profitable even. Right? Well, That's hey, there you go, <laughs> even, even better. better. <laughs> <laughs> and so how to just take us through that, that entrepreneurial track, because that's interesting, because you, know, you, you, you got it, you focused on it, you developed it, and then you sold it to Dell. I mean, that must have been a ride. I mean, talk us through the emotion. I mean, entrepreneurs kind of don't think, hey, we'll sell it. I mean, you were approached by Dell and said, hey, you know, we should do something, and how do you handle that? Absolutely. So, you know, we had uh, uh, some very, very exciting technology. So we kind of took the approach that we were going to really crush that problem uh, where it stood and, and try to bring a lot of different disciplines to, to storage and dedupe. Uh, interestingly enough, we kind of weren't even aware of companies like Data, Data Domain and others not being from storage. Uh, you know, so we went and took a completely different kind of an approach to it using, I'd say, you know, techniques from compression, communications and stuff like that and, and applied it. Uh, but very quickly, you know, in, in a, we, we got the technology in the market in about a year after we founded the company. Uh, and uh, and in, in the subsequent two years, we had a tiger by the tail. I mean, this thing was, you know, uh, we had a lot of petabyte customers who were very, very interested in our solution and deployed it successfully. And that's when we knew we had something. As, develop, uh, as engineers and founders, you're like, okay, you got the tiger by the tail, it hits you, wow. There's a line forming for our stuff. What sure. do you do? You got to dig in deep and build more, right? I mean, you don't just say, hey, I build the total solution. You kind of nibble away at it. At what point did you say, wow, we got to work harder? build this out faster. Well, I, you know, I don't know about work harder. I think we were feeling like we were pretty working pretty harder, but, uh, but you know, but... Uh, when, when it hits you, the aha, like, wow, well, I, I, this is I'll, it. I'll tell you what, the aha, I think, was, you know, pretty much when we got our first uh, PO, and was it for 250K, uh, you know, from a customer who 
couldn't solve this problem. And, and you know, usually you kind of, as a startup, you start by taking small bite-sized, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, things of the apple. Give and it away for free and see, get some exactly, feedback, you know. You, know? you go to your friends and family yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Here, we, you know, we had a, a, a large corporation saying, here, here. Uh, here's you, a check. Because here's a check and, and we want more, you know. So nice. um, I think we knew right then. And, and it was not really no surprise because we had done quite a bit of diligence before we even started the company. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we had some great VCs, uh, Piner Perkins, Highland yeah. Capital, and so on. And, 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 you know, those guys don't part with their money very easily. But in this case, they were, you know, beating each other up trying to give us money because yeah. we, we had spent quite a bit of time um, yeah. analyzing and, and, and you've been and there before on another venture analysis. so you've been another venture yeah. sold to Citrix you guys weren't you know deer in the headlights no, you, no, you no. kind of experience you know track record just says that you probably execute well but you need a big problem that's yeah. the hard thing to and find and you found one right how much did you raise we raised about 30 million 30 million yep if, if you had to do it over again would you have done anything differently oh well you know, I don't think I'd have done a lot of things differently. Uh, I think uh, we would have picked uh, a time when the economy didn't slow down in between. Yeah, that was a real that's about the only thing I can think of. You can't really pick that. It's no. like, you know, and I'm, I'm you not, pick your friends, but you can't pick that. I'm not trying to say we had flawless execution. That's not the point. You know, well, you, know, you, you never, never do. Right? You, you never do. There's, there's always look backs. It's, yeah, it's, HR issues. I'm talking about the big picture issues. Looking yeah. for advice to other entrepreneurs. Strategy. Are, you know, sort of maybe thinking about starting something, you know, things like that. That's really what we try to probe for here oh, at the Cube. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, don't do anything where there isn't a big customer problem. I, I think it's pretty clear to me that entrepreneurs are very, very smart, they're very passionate, and a lot of times they're serving the Kool-Aid so much that they've kind of drunk quite a bit of it along the way, and they kind of forget that, you know, what they have is kind of cool to them, but it may not be as cool to everybody else, and I think, when you, when you start the opposite, instead of starting with a technology, or even if you start with one, as long as you kind of focus and uh, you know, find a big customer problem, uh, that is, I think, at the heart of really kind of building you know, a, a, a great and sizable uh, opportunity. Yeah, now, the, the whole concept of an appliance, maybe I go back to network appliance, mm -hmm. right? It's been a real boon for entrepreneurs, yep. right? Because you can't just go to IBM and say, hey, take my technology and embed it. And they're going to say, yeah. Sure, you're not going to get any market traction that way, and then it gives you some other flexibility to not just ship an SDK, right? I mean, so, so, um, but when we saw, I know as an observer, when we saw all these these storage optimization technologies coming out, we all we said ultimately this has to be embedded. Okay, right? so let's. And, and so, where are you at with that? Okay, so today? let's talk about that, right? So first, uh, first headline. I mean, hey. Dedupe is is a success in the sense nobody we don't have to tell anybody that Dedupe has been an accepted technology. Right. So what's really changing in the marketplace? Well, I think there's two things that are changing, right? One of them is people now want Dedupe everywhere, not just in backup. They right. want it in primary, they want it in near line. In fact, they want it in storage workflows. They want it on replication. They want it everywhere. So that's one headline, right? The second thing is I would say that what they want is an end-to-end -end optimization solution, not just point solutions. So we've had great point solutions, but what customers now are f f uh, discovering is, for example, let's take a simple example. Somebody shrinks their data on primary using technology A. Well, guess what? When they're backing it up, they're going to have to rehydrate it, expand it, send it over a bunch of you know fat pipes, take a lot of time to a backup appliance where it shrunk again with a different technology. Mm -hmm. This thing makes no darn sense at all to anybody. It's obvious, you know, to to <laughs> the, the the simplest layman that they go, hey, wait, what, what, what did you just, why did you just do that? So one of the things that we're doing, you know, and we're, now we're doing this as part of Dell, which is really super exciting, is we're, we're doing several things, right? First of all, we're, we're, we've always had the technology, best technology to shrink at any tier. So we're applying it, not just to backup, but to primary, to near line and, and, and then applying it to storage workflows as well. So one is the best technology, uh, it's kind of the second generation of DDoP, which is content aware DDoP. And we can talk a little bit about that. But the second thing we're doing is we're embedding it, just like you said, Dave, as well as we're making it all work end to end. So the, it, that thing starts with a very, very simple philosophy. And the philosophy is this, right? Shrink your data early and then Keep it shrunk through the life cycle of the, of the uh, data. It, 
unless a user is looking for the data, you really shouldn't have to rehydrate the data. So in other words, if you take a data center, you know, a, say data is created in the beginning, user uses it, it's very active in the beginning, after that, it, it, it stops being active. Yeah, certainly after 90 days, right? It goes, 90 days has been a very common knee yeah, of the curve, right? Yeah, right? So let's say after 90 days, you, you, sh you shrink it, and then after that, you know, data moves around a lot. There's a lot of storage workflows. We estimate about 40% of the workflows in a data center are about migration, replication, you know, tiering, right, backup. All of these workflows have nothing to do with the user. It's got to do with the machine talking to another machine. And for all of that, you don't need to rehydrate the data, just keep it shrunk. Yeah, right. Right. And so what you do by doing that is now the next generation of DDo, it's not about just cutting storage costs, it's about shrinking backup time and replication time. Network it's bandwidth about, consumption. Exactly. Yeah. You know, in fact, uh, even at Oak Arena, one of the significant things, we went back and did some case studies on our customers, like about six, seven months later to see what, the, and you know, they, they were raving about all the bandwidth benefits and the backup benefits they were getting. And they weren't even talking about the cost yeah, of storage yeah, right. because that's an ongoing operational mm -hmm. cost. So one is a capex reduction, the other one is an opex reduction, right? Yep. It's, it's huge. So uh, today what we're doing, busy doing at, at Dell, is taking kind of our Ocarina uh, technology and the secret sauce in that and embedding it in all of the storage platforms that you're seeing slowly but surely coming out of Dell. We're not ready to announce all of them today mm -hmm. because you know, yeah. then it would, it would put you out of business. You wouldn't get all the information. That's right. <laughs> you, you want us to come back several times. Yeah. So we'll put you, you know. on our research client list then, for sure. <laughs> you need some help there. Yeah, but, I, so I, what you're saying is, so you're, what you're saying is your technology is going to be put in Dell as an end-to-end. -end. Yes. So you're going to essentially be incubated and sprinkled across the different solutions. Yes, sprinkled okay. across, and you, you know, I would say you should, you should Invented. start thinking. You should start thinking about this technology from a customer viewpoint. A customer wants to see it as early as possible in its in, in the life cycle of the data, which means not just in storage, but possibly even in servers. Mm -hmm. Why not? Right. So you talked about context aware, and that's really one of the unique things that Ocarina mm -hmm. did, does. Yep. Um, what do you mean by that? Take people through how you take different content types and apply different uh, algorithms, different technologies okay. to optimize okay. the capacity. Yeah. Uh, very very simple uh, thing called content content aware. Right? Okay, you, we're rocking. Just, just a little surge here. I want to just interrupt you for a second. Yeah. I want to thank you for all the folks out there. Syndication's just kicked in. Uh, we're introducing theCUBE here at SNW. We're here with uh, Dell executive and founder of Oak Arena. The, uh, talking about storage. Storage is where the action is. And we're here because the storage industry is turning into a revolution and an uh, opportunity and massive growth. People are making money. We so he sold this company for millions and millions of dollars to Dell. What was the number? I'm uh, not at liberty okay. to, to talk so about that. Well, let's put it this way. Well, so so there's more growth so, going so, on now. So, so uh, IBM bought Storewise for over 100 million, right? I mean, and that was you know, the same time frame, right? Dell didn't publicly release a number, but it was a substantial exit, right? The investors are happy. We were all happy. Yeah. Storage yeah. is changing the life of, of, of users out there, from yep. gamers to uh, people using Facebook, Twitter. I mean, it's new applications, video. Uh, so the storage is moving from this, you know, disks, collection of disks to really a part of the cloud, yeah. mobile. And so uh, I want to welcome the new, the new viewers. So sorry for the interruption, let's so get right back to the Marley action. here with Marley from Dell, former Oak Arena. So we were talking about how, um, it's, let, me, let me reset here. So, so Oak Arena is a company, was a company before it got acquired that, that focused on storage optimization and, and deduplication and compression, right? yes, different technologies to, yep. to shrink the amount of storage that you have to store. We all know about the, the, the capacity explosion. The, the IDC says 1.2 million petabytes was shipped uh, last year alone. Um, and so, Oak Arena is a company that solves that problem by applying proprietary algorithms to shrink data. And now we were just talking about the unique aspects of what you do uh, around different content types. Yep. So, most technologies are sort of generic across all content mm -hmm. types. Talk a little bit about what you guys did that's different. Okay, so uh, content-aware optimization is, is basically a three-step process, okay? 
Uh, at first step, ironically, is to be able to shrink the data better, we actually expand it first. So we call it delayering. So what we do is we take, let's take an example of a zip file. Let's say we're, we're looking at the incoming data and we got, we got a zip file. What we do is we unzip it. We, in fact, it may contain a PDF, a, a Word document, or a PowerPoint file. We'll expand that, we'll keep expanding it, stripping its original compression and encoding till we get to the raw data, binary form. So now it's in a raw, expanded form. At this point, now that we've stripped out the original encoding and compression, we can apply Ocarina algorithms, right? So the two classes of algorithms are dedupe and compression. And in dedupe, what we do is we apply something called object dedupe. So it's very different from the classic kind of block sliding window dedupe that you've seen mm -hmm. uh, applied. And, and, and an example of that would be, let's say we encountered in the PDF as well as in the PowerPoint file, the picture of a building. Somebody's got a corporate overview. They've got the picture of the corporate headquarters. Well, what object dedupe can do is it'll recognize that picture as an object. Now think about this, that object is encoded in PDF differently, because that comes from Adobe, than it is in PowerPoint, it comes from Microsoft. So the ones and zeros on disk for that picture are totally different. So a sliding window dedupe wouldn't catch that object. Whereas what we do is we recognize that as an object because we're content aware and we say, hey look, that's the same picture in both these places. And we can dedupe at a sub-file object level. So we're now able to look underneath the file and look at all the objects that are similar, like a logo, for example, would be the Dell logo, mm -hmm. an object. And then we strip it all out. The next thing we do is now, we've got a whole bunch of different content types and we can apply content-specific algorithms for compression. And, and a great example of this would be, you know, if you have oil and gas type of data or uh, DICOM images for medical images, we can recognize different data types and we'll apply specific algorithms. We've got a suite of over 40 algorithms that are specific to each content. And so we can shrink it better than anybody else can. Okay, so, so you've got that content. And now that technology you were talking about before, because we've got a lot of new audience members here, mm -hmm. you're applying that at Dell across the entire portfolio. You called it dedupe everywhere, and it's a dedupe slash compression Correct. everywhere. And, and basically, the premise is that most of the data that we, we're storing is, um, let's call it stale, mm -hmm. um, after 90 days. Correct. And so, why not? compress it, especially if you're going to be moving it around the network that's right. and, and storing it and archiving. Yeah. And that's what Dell's so, working hard on. So, so. Uh, here's, uh, so, you know, content aware, uh, the uh, content aware uh, compression and dedupe, what does it give you? It gives you three to five times better reduction at any tier. So now what do we do? We can now put it inside servers, inside some of the various Dell storage platforms, you know, like Dell Compellent. You know, that will be having Ocarina technology embedded in there. Ecologic will have uh, you know, that uh, technology embedded in there. And then what happens is, you shrink it very, very early, like you said, 90 days, the data is less active, shrink the heck out of it, and then just keep it shrunk. And so as the data moves from tier to tier, you never rehydrate it. So you can replicate faster, you can back it up faster, you know, all of the benefits of bandwidth and, and much less management time. Very pragmatic philosophy. So right? we call that end-to-end -end optimization. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a, just a generic Dell yeah. question? Because, you know, I see, um, Michael Dell's known, started in his dorm room, he's very entrepreneurial. Yep. Dell's grown to be a monster. I remember when they were doing direct mails, working at HP at the time. They got in the enterprise, now they're massive, very successful business model. But now the world's changing, and everyone's going direct, is direct. What's new for Dell? Tell us what's happening uh, that's exciting in, at Dell right now. Well, you know, I, I guess, John, it's very, it's very funny, having been there now eight months, I, I didn't know much about Dell at all before coming into the company. There's very few parts of Dell that are not exciting, but let's talk about sort of some of the changes from yeah. the top, top down. You know, I think, uh, you know, Michael has come in and has decided to transform the company from being sort of a, you know, top-notch franchise uh, PC player that is, you know, best of class e-tailing. Supply chain. It's, exactly, Ooh, yeah. right? So, so that still continues. That part of the company is constantly reinventing itself, right? So, you know, yeah. supply chain gets even better, you know, paths to market better, the e-Dell part is still continuing to- but not a lot of R&D. And so on. Right, I mean, it wasn't, well, their, their emphasis you know, wasn't R&D. Yeah, the, 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 in a sense, it's, it's really about integration and putting together packages that anticipate what customers need and, and, and serving those segments. But now let's talk about the enterprise business. So yeah. what's happened is, Dell is complementing that technology now with really kind of its own IP. 
So the big news is owned IP yeah. versus OEM IP. And that's right? what I mean by R and D, right? So yeah, they're acquiring, exactly. and now they're doing sure, you know, right? by default. So, so right? Dell has, you know, interesting enough, Dell has been a pretty large storage player, but it's done it with a mix of its own technology. And, and they also are very kind of active in the mobile business as well with China exactly. Mobile. I mean, that's right. it's not a hidden secret in the U.S., but not a hidden secret. But now, now that you're talking about Dell, they talk about Apple and the iPhone, but mm -hmm. Dell has some success in mobile. Yes. Yeah. Can but you I share think, any you know, data there, is it, well, or is it you know, outside I, your scope? I, I, you know, I think uh, I, I would, I would uh, <laughs> want to talk a little bit about the storage business at first, well, then so we can get to the mobile yeah, so, business. So the point you were making is yeah. that essentially you were, you know, Dell was reselling a lot of other people's storage, particularly had, you know, had a relationship, still have a relationship with EMC, but but basically you guys are splitting margin. Yeah, right? these and are all, you know, these are all yeah. great partners. Al, but Al but Shugart used to say to me, Dave, when two people got a split margin, there's less margin for me. Yeah, there's so, a, there's, a, there's <laughs> less in that line. cake to eat, right? right and so, so I think the, the big change is kind of that move from saying, you know, th let's leverage the success that we saw with Equalogic. Equalogic was a huge success, right? It, it you know, acquired in 2008, and it's, you know, it's, it's increased six, seven times since then. In, in yeah, there are Wall revenue. Street estimates out there that says that it's, I, I guess, approaching a billion. I don't think I've seen one that says yeah, it's I think surpassed that's a billion, I think but I've fair, seen that. Right? Yep. that now, Equalogic was, you know, it's a relatively small company at the time, right? So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it was you know it was a successful company, but it was about I'd say 150 million or yeah. so, and 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 so that's been a huge success. I think the uh, what Dell sees now and is executing on, not just seeing, is the opportunity is the opportunity to kind of go in and leverage all those customer relationships that have been built up through these reseller uh, agreements and turning it into a much higher margin business, and and not only higher margin business, it's stickier business too, right? Because uh, you know if you if you look at sort of follow the stuff the client business or the laptop business and is less sticky the server business is more sticky and as we all know storage is very very sticky so so let's talk about that transformation in specific terms so obviously oak arena we talked about equal logic um, uh, compellent, and compellent. Is recent acquisition, and then, right. and then and then and uh, then a file system technology with uh, right. with with Exanet. Exanet, right yep so New pieces. I mean, in addition to a bigger acquisition of, of Perot, so now mm -hmm. you got a services component. Correct. That's a complete transformation. You know, That's right. Uh, so uh, you've got, you know, what you what you see in all of the names that you mentioned are sort of a combination of some of the core platforms on which products can be built, like like Ecologic and Compellent, and then things like the file system and the Ocarina Dedupe technology as key building blocks. Kind of think of it as a Lego block that you can put on top of these different platforms and now you create various products that you know for different market segments in, in, uh, in, 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 in so now the hard work begins yeah. right putting all this it's stuff together begun. because yep. uh, yeah it's already begun because it's not trivial to say okay we're gonna take all these piece parts and weave them together somehow and it's all gonna click like a well-oiled machine right with different cultures and different technology bases and so you know how's that working what's your take on it's working great you know one of the one of the uh, great things about coming into dell has been i think we've been welcomed with open arms so there isn't there's not a lot of nih because you know there wasn't that no. much <laughs> internal stuff so so the beauty <laughs> of it is it's a lot of IH. you're running the show it's, uh, you're running the show yeah. the, the you know the it's it's smooth sailing as far as integration we consider ourselves well integrated and i think uh welcomed and 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 now we're kind of you know, they're relying on you guys. I mean, they're relying on your technology. Well, I, you know, to be I think we're, I think we're relying products. on each other. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. You know, when 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 Ocarina got acquired, I you know I, I told my team, why would a company like us, who's been so successful, want to go get acquired? And and it's very simple because you know, getting in with Dell is like tying a rocket ship to our back, strapping it to our back, and turning it on. And guess what? It's going to take us to where we want to go even faster. You know, we aim to revolutionize the world of dedupe and the and our ability to do that, you know, both financially, access to customers, access to an yeah. incredible team, more sales people. team. Yeah, everything. It's, so it's, from, it's, it's, it's and it's all happening. Right from Ogarina's standpoint, have you seen that 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 up the dramatic uptick in revenue or are you still going through the integration process? We're going through the integration like, process, yeah, okay. yeah and, and but but we're seeing the you know, I would say the change is dramatic in our in our, you know, the number of people we've hired, the ability to, you know, we've gone from from one product that we had that was a standalone product now to, you know, six or seven uh, products that we're going to be introducing with our technology in there. And not only that, the customer base is incredible. What a, what a fantastic yeah, yeah, customer no base. People who really like the Ecologic product and now the Compellent uh, product, you know, and those are all targets for us. So, so 
we're talking about the transformation of Dell. How, how does the the organization work? I mean, some companies, you know, big whales, they, they buy a company, they leave it alone. I mean, EMC right now is an example of that. They're leaving mm-hmm. data domain alone, they're leaving ICE alone alone. How's it work in, 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 in HP's actually quite different, right? HP's mashing stuff in. How's it work in a Dell? Is it a combination? I think, I think it's really kind of a, a pragmatic approach to that organizationally. In other words, so if you look at people like Equalogic and, and Compellent, I think they're being left alone but being, you know, kind of boosted up through the through the Dell system. Uh, whereas companies like Ocarina, we are, you know, a technology that's kind of an, a horizontal technology that cuts across all of these. So we're actually working with all these different platform mm-hmm. uh, platforms and getting embedded in there. So we're left alone in that sense. Nobody's just telling us how what we should be doing, but what we're doing is working with these different groups and in a sort of a you know horizontal manner. Yeah, your objective is not to optimize your particular solution; it's to embed and, and well, or and, rather, and, and, you know, and, the way to optimize yeah. our solution is to embed to, ourselves. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, great. In there. right, right, right. Yeah. Good, absolutely. All right, Merle, this was uh, a great discussion. Uh, appreciate you giving us an update on uh, on Oh, you're on, welcome. On it's uh, it's good Ocarina. to see you, uh, see you again. It's <laughs> been uh, a while. So, really you a know, pleasure. looks like you've got uh, a really pretty exciting thing going. I, I, I yeah, feel we do. Like, we got uh, a big audience here. I, I feel like I'm on ESPN. Or, you know, yeah, 4,794 <laughs> people. That's good. Uh, I take wow. screenshots because, I, I, um, you know, a lot of people don't pull those kind of numbers. I think there's so. more people uh, watching us than there are live here. At, uh, so, so I have a question for you. We have a lot of folks out there yeah. that um, um, Excuse me are watching that, watching the, the, the scene here and want to know Storage Networking World is obviously a show that's been around for a long time mm-hmm. and uh, you said you're new to storage in a way from your last venture. Um, talk about the entrepreneurial action happening around storage. Not so much old school storage, but like yeah. you know, you're an entrepreneur, seasoned entrepreneur, you've been there, done that. You know what it's like, you've done it before, you've raised professional money from Lina Perkins and, and, and uh, you know these top firms. So take us through your view of the entrepreneurial landscape. How exciting is it and what are you seeing that, that are, that's emerging that's getting a lot of a, a mind share from entrepreneurs? The kinds of problems, automation, is it uh, virtualization, or anything in, in particular that you see? Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on in, in storage uh, from an entrepreneurial viewpoint and part of the, there's really two reasons for that. One is it's a big market, right? So, and it's a big market where there's a constant set of new needs popping up. And the second reason to be perfectly candid is because, you know, of the recent success Successes of companies like us and other exits that have happened, uh, you know, there's been uh, a, a, there's a lot of VC money chasing chasing uh, <laughs> this sector too. Uh, so uh, I think you know there's a number of areas that are pretty exciting. Clearly, you know, the cloud has spawned uh, a, a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs. I'd say, you know, there, there's probably. Uh, two or three broad categories. One is just to be a cloud itself. I think the success of of Amazon. As, if you were an uh, you entrepreneur know. right now, say your work's done at Dell, and you had to it's not of, done yet, but you know, yeah. just mm-hmm. hypothetically, just say sure. it was, and you were going to go out there and take a step back, maybe take a couple weeks off, or whatever days, yeah. months, whatever entrepreneurs <laughs> take one day off. Right. What problem would you try to tackle, or would you look at? You know. Well, I would I I would say that you know there's a l- lot your more than take you. Would it be well, cloud? Would it be mobile? Would it be consumer? Uh, you know, I would actually not go to mobile that easily. I think the mobile thing in the end is there's a cu- couple of choke points that are very very important. You know, the the platforms themselves mm-hmm. uh, and so on. So it's it's not all that all that easy. It, it's it's a it's a lot more tough because there's it's kind of hard to get to that top two or three kind of applications and so on, with the exception of gaming, which is a kind of a little bit of a hit and miss game, I would say, right? Uh, but, but you know, I think certainly storage is one. Virtualization, I think, is an area where I see a lot happening, where uh, the it, it's kind of like the theory of virtualization and the early practice, kind of the early gains have been gotten. Now there's a whole opportunity to kind of turn that into a bigger ecosystem. Next level kind Next of level software, f- exactly. automation, these kinds of yeah. things? Yep, exactly. Exactly. I think there's a, there's a big opportunity there. VDI represents a, a, a newer opportunity that's beginning to take you know shape and so on. I, I think the cloud is a very exciting place. You know, being 
a part of the cloud uh, is is an exciting opportunity. Figuring out how you can seamlessly go from you know your 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 data to the cloud is I think a kind of an unsolved problem. There's a the number of people working. Cloud on that, and but, storage uh, all powers things like gaming, and we have a big audience out there um, watching right now that yeah. have a gaming affinity towards gaming, gaming like StarCraft, and Xbox, and and then you get the casual gamers of the Zingas and you know Farmville, all that kind of stupid game stuff. But but gaming is now part of the culture. Yep. Um, what do you see in that world with, with Connect being hacked and you know um, you got new user interfaces? So any comments, the commentary, not so much storage, specific, but like that evolving edge consumer. Do you have any opinion on that? Well, you know, I mean, clearly, I think one of the things that's happened in gaming is the addition of the mobile platforms. It wasn't, it's not the domain of Xbox, Nintendo, and those guys anymore. I think, you know, uh, just look at the success of Angry Birds. It's not, it's not that small stuff. So yeah, I think, yeah. you know, the intersection, I think, of mobility is with gaming is a huge intersection. The other one, I think, is really the intersection of social networking with gaming. You know, it's not just as simple as multiplayer games now, which is kind of a niche, in, if you will. There were a few games, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, World of Warcraft and other things like that that were sort of very focused on that. But I think there's kind of the intersection of all those it has kind of thrown things into a, a different realm. Yeah, the social right? gaming has been a big it's, phenomenon. It's a big phenomenon, but but social networking with gaming and stuff like that. The other thing that I'm seeing kind of interesting is a number of other industries applying kind of gaming techniques to to uh, what they do. In other words, you know, enterprises kind of approaching a bunch of their solutions in the form of games to attract people. Great. Okay, I'll, I'll take a step out. And, all right, um, uh, Murley, thanks very much for coming. Right, we yep. have Riverbed coming. Oh, okay. Much. Yeah. All right, all right it was great to see you again. Thank you. Oh, Thank you for coming on, Dell. Yeah, great update. Really Congratulations great on your acquisition. Uh, made a lot of money. We're very successful uh, powering Dell. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. Oh, We're live here at SNW in Silicon Valley. It's a storage networking show. It is a show about innovation. The old storage business, disk drives, kind of boring, you know. Snorage. Snorage is now <laughs> the hotbed of innovation. Massive growth. I'm calling this the South by Southwest of storage.